keep finding people coming up with big ideas, and I say, but we've done that already. Yeah. <laughs> we've done it, but yeah. we, we maybe should shout a little bit louder. I yeah, think. we have to shout a little bit louder. Yeah, yeah so. definitely. So. Starting this this bar line, it's a growing into an internationally recognized project. The bar line was recently recognized by the Accelerating Science Award program as a high impact open access organization. The kind of stories that we're beginning to to hear from the, the impact that the authors receive, uh, not just impact factor, right? It's had nothing to do with impact factor. The impact in being felt in terms of being able to connect with other researchers, having their work read by other researchers from the regions, and so on and so forth. This is my husband doing what he likes doing best, being a botanist. And he and I began talking about it. But it all began, really, with this guy. And he, along with a lot of other people, was getting very concerned about the distribution of scientific information. And so our aim really was to do something about easing the gap in knowledge between the South and the North, you know, using electronic communications. And then Liz said, as he always said, when I go back I will talk to Sydney. Super Sydney decided he could set up some kind of a database. And we, we could try something. We should start thinking about a way of uh, accessing our databases in the same with the same, same system. Part, same system. Yeah. Yeah. I found this slide from 2005. <laughs> it shows what happens with BioLine. <laughs> After receiving all the files, uh, at the beginning it was paper, right? Barbara yeah, yeah, scan yeah, and yeah, yeah. But then this, all this material is stacked uh, in HTML, is formatted, uh, or in, we, uh, they produce uh, XMLs for the the metadata of the, the articles with uh, abstracts, titles, authors, and all this information. Species names too. Um, they produce the before it was HTML with the full papers, now they produce PDFs. And after doing all this job, they send it to us. Once the abstracts are here, we process out their scripts, programs that process these files produce uh, and feed names, scientific names database, the abstracts database of Wildlife. There are uh, a special database to control the journals, issues, and all these things. And then we have uh, scripts that produce the, the main Wildlife site on the fly, producing the homepage, the journals page. And also we have uh, services that allow other uh, systems to check if uh, the existence of journals in the, the violent system and create link, special links to, to them in the species link network, for example. If you can make links from um, phrases or words within that article to other databases, it just makes the article alive. So, was it making a difference? Was it worth continuing with this? Or was it making any difference to the developing countries themselves? Over the last 15 years or so, we have built really interesting bridges to a lot of these organizations in Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, India, China, Indonesia. And um, she said, yeah, it's made a big difference. It's given us international visibility. Before the journal was on finance system, it was pretty much invisible. When you've got international visibility, this means you start making partnerships with people in the rest of the world, you know, and you find other people working in the same area as yourself, and you can develop programs together, and it just opens a whole new world. Uh, I remember very clearly about uh, in 1997 when uh, Barbara and Leslie started inter interesting us uh, in making our journal uh, available online. And at first we thought it was an impossibility, 
but through their commitment, through their persistence and kindness and energy and passion, we were able to bring our journal, which was published in Africa, to the global community. So the answer was yes, it is important, it is being used, it is valuable. It's still increasing and still being used. And I think, Dory, you, you were telling me that it's the most used of your system? Yeah, yeah. yeah. by far. Have you made an enormous contribution to open access and to um, uh, helping the developing world to have access to scientific and uh, scholarly information. Um, she really was a pioneer and visionary in this field and uh, began working on what became known as open access, um, but she's been working in the field for over 20 years. Um, and her vision um, and leadership and setting up Bioline um, are really remarkable. Barbara has been a personal inspiration to me in the way she has lived her life, um, vital and useful and energetic. Um, the way she has constantly picked up new skills to harness the online world for lobbying and information sharing about the benefits of online publishing and open access. It's hard to believe that 20 years have gone past since you had that wonderful idea for BioLine International. And in those 20 years, you have continued to push and agitate for open access, and you're still doing it. I don't know where we would have got without you. We're all so glad that you're on our side. All I can say for now is happy birthday, BioLine, and I wish I was there. So just remember how important networking is. Look what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Look what happens yeah. when you network. This was our first uh, was terminal. <laughs> Barbara came and uh, she decided we had to be in contact with the world. <laughs> so uh, she managed to to put a, uh, to create an account for us in the Diacom system. It was basically two computers, one in the States, another in the UK, that had a somehow a link <laughs> that could manage to exchange emails at the time. So uh, we had to, to find a way of connecting to this thing. <laughs> so we contract a, a line, an international line we from Brazil. Yeah. It was really expensive, very expensive. We had to be very careful on using it. But then Barbara arrived to uh, to inaugurate, to, to make the first connection, right? The password for <laughs> and underline claims. Uh, the underscore. Why is it? This terminal. This keyboard didn't have this underscore. <laughs> so Barbara had to call the UK to ask them to change the password. <laughs> That for some reason was not working. <laughs> it was very nice. Sorry.